That's how I view it. But all in all, this is still mind-blowing news, no matter how you look at it. Because you got to think about this. This school hasn't been relevant in a very, and I mean a very long time. Woo! Man, oh man, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you like some drama because we got plenty of it today. So late last night, the entire college football world was set on fire when this news came out that potentially Nebraska might not just be getting Kyle McCord, we're going to talk all about that, but they might also be flipping a five-star recruit that is currently committed to Georgia. This is crazy to say the least because you got to think about it. Why in the world would a five-star quarterback flip from Georgia, one of the best programs in all of college football currently, and go to Nebraska? One of the worst programs in all of college, well not one of the worst, but you get what I'm saying, they're mediocre at best. It just doesn't make any sense you're talking about Georgia, the tippy of the top, compared to Nebraska? Why in the world would a quarterback want to leave Georgia and go to Nebraska? That's the million dollar question that we might have some of the answers to. When this news came out, I had a bunch of you sending it to me, but like always, I don't care to be the first to report on the news, that'd be awesome, but I want to be the best to report on the news. So your boy Matt started making a couple phone calls, sending some texts, and I found out some stuff you may want to know. Let's just say it's not quite as simple as, oh, he had a change of heart and he doesn't want to play Georgia anymore and he wants to play at Nebraska. No, 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 no. There's a little more to it. We're going to talk all about that. We also got a couple other minor topics to speak on, including there's a crazy rumor going on with Marvin Harrison Jr. You're going to want to stay tuned for that. We also got a couple other transfer portal news to talk on. It's safe to say it's going to be a jam-packed video. Strap in, buckle up, get you a popcorn, get you a snack, get whatever meal you like to eat when you watch a video, because trust me, I do the same thing. If you like our content, consider subscribing. We're just a bunch of guys and girls that like talking about college football, and consider helping us get to our goal of 310,000 subscribers before New Year. But all right, Matt, blah, 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 shut the crap up. Now that I've read dope, let's get into it. All right, first things first. I know, I know, I know, you want to get to the main topic, but I got to get this transfer portal news out of the way first. The breaking news came out this morning, only a couple hours ago, that Ohio State's transfer running back, Chip, he's going to Kentucky. I really don't have too much to say about that outside of the fact of it shocked me and hey, maybe Kentucky's on the rise. Who knows? Remember, Kentucky also, only a couple days ago, they got Georgia's former five-star quarterback, Brock Vandegrift. That quarterback and running back duo is looking pretty dang good if you gotta ask me. For those of you who don't know, this wasn't some scrub-a-dub dub at Ohio State. Chip would have been getting a lot of reps next year. Big pickup for Kentucky, did want to throw that in there. And also, the official news came out, like I predicted a couple days ago, that Duke's transfer quarterback, Riley Leonard, he's going to Notre Dame. Great pickup for Notre Dame, but we've already talked about this so much, you shouldn't be shocked. I think Riley Leonard and Notre Dame is the perfect fit and it's match made in heaven. You can't say enough good things about Riley Leonard, and I think when you put him behind that offensive line and you surround him with some weapons, he could have a special season. Let me know your thoughts on that, and I was going to say this for an end, but let's just get it out the way too. So the past couple of days, there's been so many rumors and speculation going on with Marvin Harrison Jr., and one of the newest new rumors that has been making its rounds on social media is that he has been offered 20 to $25 million in NIL deals to stay at Ohio State. Of course, I didn't believe this, but some people are, and let me just clarify on this. This is 100% false. It's just ridiculous at this point in time. Yes, NIL, you're going to see a couple of guys get one, two, maybe possibly three to four million dollars, but 20 M's for one year? Come on, man. And you're not even talking about a quarterback, you're talking about a wide receiver. No disrespect to Marvin Harrison Jr., but it doesn't matter if you got Julio Jones out there if you don't have a quarterback throwing on the ball. I could sit up here all day and talk about that, but we gotta get to move on to the main topic of the main on court main reason you catch on to this video. What in the world is going on with Georgia and Nebraska? Well, to answer that question briefly here, a lot has been going on, and if you don't pay attention to every single minor detail, you're gonna get Law, so strap in. So yesterday, on a random Monday out of nowhere, Steve Wilfong, who does crystal balls and stuff like that, he flipped his crystal ball for Dylan Raiola from Georgia to Nebraska. That right there was the start of all of this. That was the start to the domino effect. That was going viral. Everybody's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on? And for those of you who don't know what a crystal ball is, let me sum it up real briefly here. You have these recruiting analysts and people who keep up with this stuff, and a crystal ball is just basically their prediction on where they're going to go. It should be self-explanatory. And I will vouch for these guys more times than not, if somebody crystal balls somebody to go somewhere, they're right, I'd say, 90% of the time. And obviously, for a good reason, this set the entire college football world on a blaze. Because everybody was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
they're not only just going to get Kyle McCord, but they're also going to get Dylan Raiola. What in the world's going on? And here's where things get even more interesting. Shortly after he tweeted that out and flipped his crystal ball prediction, the news came out that Dylan Raiola is going to be taking an official visit this weekend to Nebraska, December 15th through the 17th. So yeah, as you can see right here, with all the facts and evidence I've shown you, it looks like everything's lining up. But whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. That's all fine and dandy. He's flipping from Georgia to Nebraska. But it still had me asking the question, what's going on behind the scenes? It can't be quite as simple as, oh yeah, I don't want to go to Georgia anymore. I'm going to Nebraska. No, 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 no. Because you got to think about it. Nebraska is potentially going to land former five-star recruit Kyle McCord and now five-star recruit Dylan Raiola? Two five-star quarterbacks? Here's a good comment I've seen the replies out here. Somebody stated, Nebraska could get a new rich booster or something? He's asking the same thing, and he's trying to figure out, hey, what's going on? Before we go any farther, let me throw this in there. At one point in time, Dylan Raola was supposed to go to Nebraska, and that's where his family wanted him to go, but it was just a crap show there, so he wound up committing to Georgia. But anyways, continuing along here with our current day, last night I had a couple sources around that Nebraska football team reach out to me. And like always, if you want to believe me or don't want to believe me, that's all fine and dandy. I'm just here to present you with this information and you can do what you want with the information. I can't vouch for these sources too much because, well, they're not my sources in the Southeast. My sources around the Alabama football team, Georgia, Tennessee, etc. They're very good. I can vouch for them. Been talking to them for a couple years now. But as far as it goes for my sources around the Nebraska football program, well, I've just started talking to them in the past 24 to 48 hours. So I can't vouch for their credibility too much. But here's what I can do. I can tell you what they told me. And apparently and allegedly, Nebraska, they have some NIL money. In other terms, they can compete with all these other schools that are also giving out these NIL deals. I was told they can't give out the most amount of money in the world, like they're not in the top 10, but they can give out a respectable amount to at least, like I said, compete. Which to me is really interesting because I didn't know Nebraska had money like that, but when I sat back and thought about it, I was like, well, I guess it does make a little sense because you got to think about all the people that love Nebraska football. They've had, what is it now, over 350 plus sellouts? Out of all these people that support Nebraska football, they got to have a couple rich alumni or boosters here and there, don't they? So I guess it does make a little sense, right? And then you also got to throw in there that they're not just going there for money. I'm not saying that, and I guess I should have clarified on that before I started bringing up money. No, 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 no. We've talked all about this Kyle McCord situation, and the same thing applies for Dylan Raiola. I think it's very appealing for McCord and Raiola to go there because Nebraska doesn't have a quarterback. For McCord, it's like, hey, I can come in and be the starter right away, and as long as I win eight or nine games, everything's going be kosher. And Raola's looking at it from this standpoint. Even if they get Kyle McCord, by the time Raola gets there and develops, McCord's going to be gone. To me, at least, I don't even think it's far-fetched to say that McCord and Raola would go there even if they weren't promised a couple hundred thousand dollars. To go on top of all of that, if it wasn't great enough already, if you're a Nebraska fan, you are going to love this news. I have been told that Kyle McCord and Dylan Raola are pretty much a quote-unquote done deal to go to Nebraska. That's awesome, and you love to hear that for Kyle McCord, but for Dylan Raiola, it doesn't even excite me, and I'll explain why. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on this, but Dylan Raiola has played at what now? Three different high schools, and he's been committed to two or three different colleges? So let's just say, theoretically speaking, for the sake of this video, Dylan Raiola commits to Nebraska. Well, to me, and I can't speak for you, his commitment holds zero weight. You're talking about a kid who has transferred high schools multiple times and he's decommitted and committed multiple times. And I don't want to take anything away from it. It'd be awesome if he committed, and I'm not saying that means he's going to decommit, but I wouldn't count my chickens before they hatch. I wouldn't even be happy until he got onto campus and he started practicing. That's how I view it. But all in all, this is still mind-blowing news no matter how you look at it because you got to think about this. This school hasn't been relevant in a very, and I mean a very long time. This Nebraska fan base is selling out games and they've sucked. All they want and all they need is an ounce of hope. And I think if they can get Kyle McCord and Dylan Raiola, that's that ounce of hope that they're going to cling on to. Awesome news for Nebraska, but also let me show you this. This was also making its rounds on Twitter last night. Got over a million views. So it looks like Georgia fans are not too happy about this. I haven't even read it. I just saved it because I was like, eh, I'll read it for the video. It says, Georgia fans are looking to do whatever it takes to stop Dylan Raiola from going to Nebraska. Hashtag go dogs. So this is on one of them Georgia message board things. Does anyone here work at Hartsfield Jackson Airport? 
It's being reported that Raola will visit Nebraska on Friday. I assume that he'll take the 221 p.m. <laughs> Delta flight, what the crap, which is also the last flight of the day to the state. Therefore, if this flight gets canceled, he likely won't be able to make the trip and will stay committed to Georgia. Obviously, messing with commercial flights is a slippery slope, so I'm not suggesting that anybody does anything illegal, but does anyone here work for Delta? All right, before we go any farther, just to even write, even think this is psychopath behavior, but to write it, shh, I don't know, somebody need to check on this dude. Anyways, continuing along here, if some loyal Georgia pilots or flight attendants do call in sick at the last minute, the flight could be canceled and we could keep Raola. Maybe someone working could hold the flight up for quote unquote maintenance issues. At the very least, he could quote unquote lose his checking bag so he'd have to experience a Nebraska winter without a check-in. Nah, this dude's a menace to society. I'm just spitballing ideas, but if anyone has anything else, those will also be appreciated. <laughs> Somebody in the comment section said that's a great way for the FBI to visit you. Yeah, so there's that. Let me know your thoughts on that down below as well. Look, man, there's many more things I could say, but as of now, it looks like you can expect old Common Court and Raola committing to Nebraska very soon. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Let me know your thoughts down below about that.